Okay, so good morning class. So we're gonna talk about today. I mean, today we're gonna talk about. I'm sorry. We're gonna talk about the physical geography of East Asia. So before we tackle our, before we tackle our topic, can you, can you please download the infographic that I uploaded in the Google Classroom? So everyone downloaded it, na? Okay, so I will continue my discussion if once we. All everybody has only downloaded it. Okay, so okay. Okay, so continue. So before so we can see in the infographic the percentage of the biomes in East Asia. So they are fifteen percent tropical forest, seven percent temperate forest, seven also percent warm forest, six percent evergreen taiga, twenty-eight percent delicious taiga. 13% Tanja, 1% Sabana, 10% is Grassland, and 11% is a desert. So, before we go to the, before we explain why is it like this, why is the percentage like this, we must understand why, what are the physical, what are the geographical features of each of the countries. So, let's start with China. China is a lot more greener on the west side than in the eastern side because in the western side you can see the, there we can see the highlands and the dry lands it, it, the highlands is dry because it has a lot of desert and also the water in there is ice because it is so cold the highlands in there is very high that it is it reaches five kilometers above sea level okay so, and waters from the highlands comes down in the east side of China flows to the east side which makes the east, uh, east side of China a good place for agriculture and vegetation. So do you remember the Yellow River in China? The water from the Yellow River comes from the highlands in the west. Okay so let's go to uh, so we are done in China. Let's go to Macau. So in the case of Macau and Hong Kong they are all coastal states because of their close proximity in the body of water the vegetation there is good so there's a healthy vegetation in there and healthy forest you can see that hong kong and macau is very green okay the north and south korea again is sorry it's not again okay korea north and south is similar has similar geologic features in the in the eastern side you can see the mountainous areas and on the western side you can see the plain lands and you can see the most of the cities of the Korea. So in the western side of North Korea, you can you can find Pyongyang, their capital city, and in South Korea, you can find Seoul, 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 okay, whatever. Okay, so so in Korea is also a peninsula, so you can take note of that. Okay, let's go to the most seismically active country in East Asia, which is Japan. Okay, Japan is created by volcanoes, so it is a volcanic island that is created maybe a million years ago because of the collision of the Pacific Plate and the Asian Plate. Okay, so, and Japan is mostly mountainous and highly covered in lush vegetation and greenery because it is a volcanic island and volcanic soil is very rich in nutrients. And, okay, just like Japan, Taiwan is also a volcanic island and also it also has just like the Koreans the eastern side of Taiwan is very mountainous and the western side is mostly in the plain lands where you can find the cities cities of Taiwan and it, it is also a very green country unlike China it has, doesn't have any deserts So from the report of England, so the report was a geography of Asia. So the report was very good. Uh, but I can say is that the flow must really be more precise or may, may be organized because uh, the flow of the lesson may be jumping from other other topic, other countries in other countries. So the students will not never understand the lessons. And also, you must have teacher-to-student interaction. 
uh, teacher-student interaction is very important so that the students uh, and the teacher will understand and also be interacted with the topic you explain. Uh, by this, your redemo, uh, you will apply these strategies and the report will be done and that's all. Thank you. Mr. Esclamado, your demonstration was good. It was also a good idea that you provided your students with infographics so that they are guided by the lesson that you're discussing and also they are encouraged to um, share their own thoughts and opinions about the said topic. However, um, there is a less interaction between you and your students and that is one thing that we have to consider because chances are if you're the only one who's talking, uh, your students might find it boring and they won't be encouraged to listen to the lesson that you're discussing. So you have to maintain that strong and active uh, interaction between you and your students. Um, you might uh, also initiate by asking questions and encouraging them to share their ideas about the said topic so that you might be able to get their attention and at the same time uh, they are also entertained and are encouraged to participate and to learn in your lesson. Okay, class, no, good morning. So, before our discussion, let me ask you about something. So, do you know any countries in East Asia? Do you know what are the names of the countries in East Asia? So, because we already know that the, the countries of Southeast Asia, which is the Philippines, the Malaysia, Indonesia, and so on and so on. So, give me some examples of the countries in East Asia. Okay, so, China. Korea, the Koreans, North and South. What else? Macau, Hong Kong. Although Macau and Hong Kong is still a part of China. Okay, so anyway, so what else? In the northern part, what? What is the country in the northern part? Mongolia, okay. Japan in the eastern side. And let's not forget Taiwan. Okay, so because the, so why are we learning this? Why are we recalling these countries? Because our topic for today is about the physical geography of East Asia. So before we tackle that subject, one let let us let us know what is the meaning of physical geography. Okay, physical geography is the study of the processes that shape the Earth's surface, animals and plants that inhabit it, and spatial patterns they exhibit. Okay, so before we go on to the discussion, I remind you that I uploaded a, uh, an infographic in our Google Classroom. So can you download it because we're going to use it in our discussion for today. Okay, so yeah, have you downloaded it? Download na? So I'm going to continue my discussion na. Okay, everybody download it? Okay, so in your infographic, if it, you can you can see that these are you can see the percentage of the the biomes that can be found in East Asia. Okay, so they are in East Asia is com East Asia is composed of fifteen percent tropical forest, seven seven percent temperate forest, seven percent warm forest, eight percent evergreen taiga, twenty eight percent delicious taiga, thirteen percent tundra, one percent savanna. 10% grassland, grassland and 11% is desert. Okay, so before we explain why is this like this, you must know first what are the geographic features of each country. Okay, let's start with China. So, China. Eastern China is a lot more greener than the west side. The west side is where we can find the highlands. The elevation in this place is so high that it reaches 5 kilometers above sea level so it is really that high and it is that high and it is very cold because those parts of China is really near the Himalayas you know the Himalayas you can find the Mount Everest right so that's why it's very cold that's what we call the whole deserts okay this is also where the waters from the rivers of China especially the river the yellow river comes from water from the mountains flow down to the east side which makes the eastern part of China 
a good place for agriculture. So eastern part of China is mostly flood plains from the rivers from the mountains. Okay, so in the case of Macau and Hong Kong, since they are still part of China, there are all coastal states. Their close proximity to the bodies of water makes the land greener, full of vegetation and full of trees, like that. Okay, so Korea, okay, Korea North and South, both have similar geographical features. So they are both in the peninsula, which is the Korean peninsula. Okay, so and in the eastern side, they have their mountainous areas, and in some plain lands and the plain lands can be found in the west so in the west we can found we can find the most of their cities like the capital cities in Rakuya you can found in the eastern in the western side Pyongyang and in South Korea we can found Seoul Seoul okay so whatever like whatever you pronounce that okay so let's okay let's go to the Chickiest country in the East Asia, Japan. Japan is most the most seismic active country in East Asia. So it is, since it is located in between in the plate boundaries of Pacific of the Pacific Plate and the Asian Plate. Okay, so it is a volcanic island. It means that the whole country is created by volcanoes. Japan is most, mostly mountainous and highly covered in lush vegetation and greenery. Okay, so just like Jap just like Japan, Taiwan is also covered is also a volcanic island. It is covered also in lush vegetations and greenery. So unlike China, they don't have any deserts or something like that because their place in they're surrounded by bodies of water. So good afternoon class. Good afternoon, sir. So how are you Japanese? Okay, so before we start our lesson, Giovanni, uh, just stay in your seat and we have a prayer. So, my brother, the son of the Lord, please say, Giovanni. Thank you, Giovanni, the son of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Son of the Lord, the Son of the Lord, the Son of the Lord. So, how was your day, Giovanni? Very fine. So, did you eat your lunch? Yes. So, about eating your lunch, so, uh, do you remember what we tackled yesterday? About the geography of Asia. Oh, geography of Asia, yes. So, what do you learn about geography of Asia? About the different landforms. Or different landforms of different countries. Yes. So, yes. give me an example of landforms in the Philippines, Japan. Mayon, Natubo. <coughs> How about in China? Equal. Ah, yes. Equal. Equal, China, sir. And in Japan? Mount Fuji. Uh, Circle Mount Fuji. So today we're going to learn about the culture and East Asia. So before that, we're going to have an activity. So this activity is going to be guess the country. So I will project some pictures and you will guess what country is that. Okay, Giovanni? Okay. So let's start. The yeah. first picture is so uh, what can you say about uh, this country? It's very creative. Okay, so can you guess what country is it? I think it's from Brunei. Brunei, so let's guess. So it's Brunei oh. and Brunei. So Brunei is a uh, temple because uh, they also uh, make this uh, boat to represent their country. So next. <coughs> so uh, can you guess what country is this? Is I think it's Cambodia. Cambodia. So maybe. So let us see. Oh, yes, it's right Cambodia. again. Yes, Cambodia. So next, this country, Japan, about Buddhism, bells, Thailand, Thailand, Thailand. Thailand. So let us see. Uh, oh, it's Indonesia. Indonesia. Indonesia is also Buddhism. So next, so this picture, Japan. I know that one. That's from Japan. Japan, because of um, Mount Fuji. So it's correct it's from Japan. So next, <coughs> oh, Myanmar. Myanmar. 
Okay, so uh, let us see. This one yan mar. Maybe it's laos. Laos. So how did you find the activity, Giovanni? It's quite interesting, sir, but very difficult to understand. Okay, why did you uh, have have some difficulties to understand it? Because I don't know that much, sir. In the country. Yes. Okay. Uh, so. So to know more, so let's go to the cultures of East Asia. So these flags, these countries uh, is in East Asia. So we're gonna study their culture. So next, so this is the map of East Asia. So from here to here, so it's very wide. So as you can see, the Philippines is right in the middle. So next, so, the learning objectives in this lesson, so this is done in different countries in East Asia. And also, we can locate countries in East Asia in the world map. And to know the distinct differences of these countries and understand the history and culture of East Asia. So, next. So, uh, here are some uh, clothing in different countries in East Asia. The Philippines, in Japan, in Korea, and in China. So, next. So East Asia is a region occupied uh, by the easternmost countries of Asian continent. So these countries are China, Japan, North Korea, South Korea, Mongolia, and Taiwan. So East Asia was the cradle of several Asian civilizations, including Asian Korea, Japan, and China. So historically, the societies of East Asia are based in Chinese cultural uh, spheres while the vocabulary of the region is based on classical Chinese scripts. So by the late 19th century, uh, China's dominance uh, in East Asia began to diminish as Japan began to embrace Western culture. So what are the countries in East Asia, Japan? China, China Japan, 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 North Korea, Korea South Korea, Korea Mongolia, and, and Taiwan. Taiwan. So thank you. Next. <coughs> So, uh, as you can see here, the Silk Road. So, the Silk Road disconnects countries trading, uh, trading their resources to other countries. So, in the name, it, it got its name from Silk, which was the main article of Chinese merchants. So, the Western countries did not know the method of manufacture. And so, it was appreciated that <clears throat> there are gold dust. The total length of the longest shopping road was about 7,000 kilometers. So imagine, at 7,000 kilometers ang um, shopping road na nagkada kilig na ay mapalitan. So, uh, a huge flow of various commodities was being delivered on the Silk Road from East to Central Asia. So, here, one could buy silk and other fabrics, iron products, dishes, gold, silver, and other jewelry. Besides, horses, high value goods, skin of wild animals, grape, wine, pomegranates, and nuts also were being delivered from Central Asia uh, to the other countries. So the slaves, the prisoners who were captured by nomads during the attack on other tribes were also being sold. So by this, the uh, resources in the Malaysia also people to make people their or sa ito made sa ilang slaves. So next, so, East Asia people at attitude towards nature and culture. So, you can see Southeast Asia is like a, a rainy region. So, there's like Amazon without many rainforests, trees, uh, large forests. I don't know. So, next. So, why are fish important to Japanese? So, why are fish like sushi in Japanese? So, the mountainous island of So, the mountainous island of Japan have limited farmland. So, gamay na farmland. So, the people depend from sea for, from the sea for food. So, fishing fleet, which are the largest in world, catches about 6 million tons of fish each year. Uh, fresh fish from, from the basis of most Japanese cooking and much of their eaten raw. Uh, so, you know that's why. So, next is the application. So, for your application, so, in a group of five, you will synthesize the learning you have acquired in East Asia through college making. So, can you give this to your group mates? 
So that's the end of my report. So thank you for listening to me and God bless. Okay, Mr. Iscavel, your demonstration was good. Uh, you were able to deliver the lesson to your students pretty well. And as what I've observed, uh, you were able to control the entire classroom. And also, you were able to set the pace of the learning of the entire classroom, which is good. However, there are some flaws that I've observed from your demonstration. One of which is that your lesson and the way that you're teaching to the students is a bit too much for them to understand. Um, it seems that you have a lack of um, giving examples and scenarios to them so that they can relate to the lesson that you're discussing uh, given the fact that they're still grade 9 students. That is why you have to simplify at least the lessons or give, give um, examples and scenarios so that they can relate to the lesson and also uh, they are able to fully understand the topic that you're discussing to them. Second is that um, you have a less interaction with your students and that is one thing that we have to consider because not having a good relationship between you and your students, especially during your discussion, um, would result to a failure of uh, their learning experience given the fact that they might get bored to your lesson and at the same time you will fail to instill the information and knowledge to them and my suggestion is that you should always maintain that active uh, interaction between you and your students and to build a good relationship to them so they will have a meaningful learning experience that is all I'm for you Ricardo Esquivel so I think that you need to give more examples to your students because um, there are things that there are students that they can uh, they can absorb knowledge based on experiences or real life situation and and you need to explain the topic more because you are lacking something that and students need something that you need to fill up on that and that's all. So, good afternoon, class. Good afternoon, sir. So, how are you, Giovanni? I'm fine. Okay, so before we start our lesson, Giovanni, uh, just stay in your seat and we have a prayer. So, my brother, son, please say, Giovanni. Please say, Giovanni, 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 please say, Giovanni. So, how was your day, Giovanni? Very fine. So, did you eat your lunch? Yes. So, about eating your lunch, so, uh, do you remember what we tackled yesterday? About the geography of Asia. Oh, geography of Asia, yes. Yeah. So, what did you learn about geography of Asia? About the different land forms. Or different land forms of different countries. Yes. So, exactly. give me an example of land forms in the Philippines, Japan. Mayon, Tubo. <coughs> How about in China? Ah oh, yes, we call China sir. And in Japan, Mount Fuji. Historical okay. Mount Fuji. So. so today, we are going to learn about the culture and East Asia. So before that, we are going to have an activity. So this activity is going to be guess the country. So I will project some pictures and you will guess what country is that. Okay, Giovanni? Okay. So let's start. The yeah. first picture is... So... Uh, what can you say about uh, this country? It's very creative. Okay, so can you guess what country is it? I think it's from Brunei. Brunei, so let's guess. So it's correct in Brunei. So Brunei is a uh, temple because uh, they also uh, make this uh, boat to represent their country. So next. <coughs> so uh, can you guess what this country is? This is Dubai. I think it's Cambodia. Cambodia. So maybe. So let us see. Oh, yes, it's right Cambodia. again. Yes, Cambodia. So next, this country, Japan. About Buddhism, rebels, 
Thailand. 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 So let us see. Oh, oh Indonesia. Indonesia. Indonesia is also good in set. So next. So this picture Japan. I know that one. That's from Japan. Japan because of um, Mount Fuji. So that's correct it's from Japan. So next. <coughs> Oh, Myanmar. Myanmar. Okay, so uh, let us see. It's Myanmar. Maybe it's Laos. 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 So how did you find the activity, Jovan? It's quite interesting, sir, but very difficult to understand. Okay. Why did you uh, have, have some difficulties to understand it? Because I don't know that much, sir. In the country? Yes. Okay. So, so to know more, so let's go to the cultures of East Asia. So, these flags, these countries, uh, is in East Asia. So we're gonna study their culture. So next, so this is the map of East Asia. So from here to here, so it's very wide. So as you can see, the Philippines is right in the middle. So next. So, do you have previous knowledge about this country? So do, you, do, you have, do you travel? No. So you can travel? Yes. So, okay. So in this, next. So the learning objectives in this lesson. So this is the different countries in East Asia. And also, you can locate countries in East Asia in the world map. And to know the distinct differences of these countries and understand the history and culture of East Asia. So next. So uh, here are some uh, clothing in different countries in East Asia. The Philippines, well, in Japan, in Korea, and in China. So next. So East Asia is a region occupied uh, by the easternmost countries of Asian continent. So these countries are China, Japan, North Korea, South Korea, Mongolia, and Taiwan. So East Asia was the cradle of several Asian civilizations, including ancient Korea, Japan, and China. So historically, the societies of East Asia are based in Chinese cultural uh, spheres, while the vocabulary of the region is based on classical Chinese scripts. So by the late 19th century, uh, China's dominance uh, in East Asia began to diminish as Japan began to embrace Western culture. So what are the countries in East Asia, Japanese? China, China, Japan, Japan North Korea, Korea, South Korea, Korea Mongolia, and Taiwan. Taiwan. So, thank you. Next. So, uh, as you can see here, the Silk Road. So, the Silk Road disconnects countries trading, uh, trading their resources to other countries. So, in the name, it, it got its name from Silk, which was the main article of Chinese merchants. So, the Western countries did not know the method of manufacture. And so it was appreciated that <clears throat> there are gold dust. The total length of the longest shopping road was about 7,000 kilometers. So imagine at uh, 7,000 kilometers um, shopping road, na talang nagkada kilig na ay mapalitan. So uh, a huge flow of various commodities was being delivered on the Silk Road from East to Central Asia. So here. One could buy silk and other fabrics, iron products, dishes, gold, silver, and other jewelry. Besides horses, high-value goods, skin of wild animals, great wine, pomegranates, and nuts also were being delivered from Central Asia uh, to the other countries. So thus, days, the prisoners who were captured by nomads during the attack on other tribes were also being sold. So by this, the guy. Uh, resources in the Malaysia, also people to make people their or sato ka made sa ilang slaves. So next, so East Asia people at attitude towards nature and culture. So you can see Southeast Asia is like a uh, rainy region. Sya, mas sa Amazon na many rainforests, trees, uh, large forests. Ano ano? So next, so as you can see here. Uh, the East Asia cultures, so we can see Taiwan, China, Uganda, Mongolia, in Japan, 
also here. So next. So foot binding, so was the custom applied of tight binding to feet of young girls to modify shape and size of their feet. Okay, so it was practiced in China from Song Dynasty and in early 20th century. So the uh, and bun feet were considered a status symbol as well mark of beauty. So in China, if bun kimu feet, wapaka. So also in China, a one child policy is a part of birth planning program designed to control size and population because China today is overpopulated and too polluted to live. So, uh, policies of most other countries, it set a limit of number of children parents could have. So, in the Philippines, we live in the Philippines, we live in China, we live in the Philippines, we live in the so the world most extreme example of population planning is China. So next. So in Japan, so Japanese value work so much. So Japanese people are hard working. So they work each day from bulay pangulay and they are dedicated to their work. So what can you uh, think Japan when I say Japan? Animusa, Naruto. It's their hard work. And also, what can you say about their uh, culture? They appreciate appreciate their culture well. Okay, so so we go back to Korea. So Korean food kimchi is an example of culture in Korea. Their food. So also, uh, if I speak Korean Japanese, what what is the uh, comes up to your mind? Like example, the drama. I don't know, sir. I don't know. So in Korean culture, uh, Korea food kimchi. So what's in your mind, Giovanni, when I say Korea? Example of Korean drama. Okay, drama. Famous K drama here in the yes. Philippines. Okay. So so in Mongolia, so the andam, which means a game of competition in the Mongolian language, typically features three contests for men, horse, riding, archery, and wrestling. In the andam, there are three. Uh, archery, horse riding, and wrestling. So next, so in the Philippines, so we, as we all know, the culture of the Philippines comprises of blend tradition, traditional Filipino and Spanish Catholic tradition, uh, with influences from America and other parts of Asia. So the Filipinos are commonly oriented and often religious with an appreciation of art, fashion, music, and food. Next, so Thailand. So much of Thailand's culture comes from ethnic Thai people. So, one of the most important influences on culture in Thailand is Buddhism. So, many of the tradi tradition and beliefs of the people in Thailand stem directly from Buddhist principle. So, Giovanni, uh, what is the practice of culture and religion of Thailand? Buddhism. Okay, Buddhism. Thank you. So, next. So, in Japan, so the cultural Culture of Japan has changed greatly over millennia. So, from the country prehistoric Juhon period to its contemporary modern culture, which absorbs influences from Asia, Europe, and North America. So, uh, uh, when I say uh, Japan was a Japan, like samurai, the, the, the old tradition, their samurai. Uh, when the Americans, Americans go to uh, Japan, they have their civil war there, they thus where Japanese uh, men killing samurai men. Okay, so next. So Malaysia. So in Malaysia, a multicultural society, uh, the main ethnic groups are native Malays as well as large population of Chinese and Indians. For visiting the country, it's clear that ethnicities uh, retain their religion, customs, and the way of life. So the most important festival of each group are public holidays. So next, Singapore. So the culture of Singapore is a combination of Asia and European culture. So influenced by Malay, South Asian, East Asian, Eurasian culture, Singapore has been dubbed as the country where East meets West, East Asia and Garden City. So in Singapore, the cultures here in East and West, and ito niyo siya makita talagang siya. So next, so in Indonesia, so Indonesia is a uh, centrally located along Asian tradition roots 
rocks between the Far East, South, and Asia in the Middle East. So, resulting in many cultural practices being strongly influenced by multi multitude of religion, including Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, and Christianity, all strong in the major trading cities. So, what are the cultures in uh, Indonesia, Jibani? Hinduism, Buddhism, Buddhism, Islam, Islam, Confucianism, yes. and Christianity. So, next. So, uh, here are some facts on Southeast Asia or East Asia. I mean. So, how long is the Great Wall of China? So, uh, the Great Wall of China stretches from 3,180 miles or 6,400 kilometers. So, mas taas pa siya kung compare from uh, CDO to Manila. Okay? So, through mountains and desert, Northern China, it is the longest structure ever built by hand. Work begun 2,200 years ago by order of the first Chinese emperor Queen Shi Huangdi. Most of the wall was built by slaves in 15th century to keep the Mongolian invaders because uh, in that era, uh, also pa ang uh, invade invade. Magsakot pa sa kalugar. So next, and also, where do China's 1.3 billion people live? So, why I say China is overpopulated? Because 80% of China's vast population lives in small rural village and works in the land. So that's the mainland China. Right? So the rest live overcrowded cities where housing is scarce. With the world largest population, China has huge, huge tasks to provide all its citizens with food and education. Yes. So where are why are the two Koreas? So the North Korea and South Korea. So here's the fact. So Korea was a single country until the end of World War II. So when it was occupied by Russian and American forces in night forces in 1948, it was divided into two: the Democratic South Korea, separated from its communist neighbor. Uh, hostilities between these countries led the Korean War in 1950 to the Today, South Korea specializes in producing and exporting manufactured goods, while North Korea remains a politically isolated region. So, why are fish imported to Japanese? So, why are fish like sushi in Japanese? So, the mountainous island of Japan have limited farmland. So, the people depend on sea for sea from the sea for food. So fishing fleet, which are the largest in world, catches about 6 million tons of fish each year. Uh, fresh fish form, form the basis of most Japanese cooking and much of their eaten raw. Uh, so you know that Japan. So next is the application. So for your application, so in the group of five, you will synthesize the learning you have acquired in East Asia through college making. So can you give this to your group mates? So that's the end of my report. So thank you for listening to me and God bless. Thank you, sir. Let us now proceed to the economy of East Asia. As we all know, East Asia is the leading um, region, not just in Asia, but also in the entire world as well, uh, when we talk about it economically. In fact, East Asia is the wealthiest region in Asia, um, with the help of the countries that are found in this region, uh, namely China, Japan, and South Korea. These three powerhouses had a huge contribution to the development of uh, East Asia. And also, East Asia is one of the most populous region in the world. It comprises more than 1.6 billion people, or roughly 22% of the world population, and they are living in six different countries and regions. <clears throat> so East Asia, rather, is home of home to one of the most economically dynamic places in the world, and this is the home of the six countries, namely Japan, South Korea, mainland China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau. And before we proceed to the economical status of East Asia today. 
uh, let us first discuss the history of East Asia so that we are able to understand how and why uh, this region become so wealthy. So East Asia was economically dominated by three states known today as China, Japan, and Korea. These three ancient states traded an abundance of raw materials and high-quality manufactured goods and exchanged cultural ideas and practices. <clears throat> they also had military conflicts with each other throughout the centuries. So, um, the reason why these three countries, China, Japan, and Korea, were so wealthy um, during this ancient period is that was because uh, China, given the fact that it, it is a big country, um, harbors a abundance of natural resources in which they utilize to strengthen their uh, economy. Also, China is one of the <coughs> one of the routes oh, routes routes rather of the Silk Road, an important event during the ancient uh, times in which uh, traders used this road to have uh, a trade between um, one country to another and also to strengthen their economic ties and. In Japan, um, although this is an island and is far away from the mainland of the continent, uh, Japan uh, also harbors a, uh, a huge natural resources in which they also utilized to strengthen its economic status. And in Korea, despite um, being a small country, um, also became wealthy because this country was uh, serves as a bridge between uh, the trades of China and, and Japan. Uh, this resulted into um, them developing their economic status and maintaining the bond of uh, and maintaining the bond between China and Japan. Despite of these three countries having a good relationship, um, however, uh, it is also unavoidable that they had conflicts from time to time, um, especially in military conflicts, um, territorial disputes, and even war to conquer um, the countries for its um, natural resources or for the economical um, reserves that they have. However, um, it, it ended with this tree having a good relationship and um, also vowing not to um, raise a conflict or at least um, minimize the conflict with these three uh, powerhouses of East Asia. And let us now proceed to the economical status of East Asia today. Now, as you all know, um, there is this um, newly outbreak of a disease called the COVID-19. Um, this is one of the factors um, in which uh, the world affairs um, has halted or at least um, slowed its economical activities um, due to this outbreak. And as we all know, China is the country in which this disease originated and was also the first country to um, had an outbreak and also for some reasons um, this disease uh, spread across China's neighbor neighbors rather and eventually it um, also went to the western part and also to the Southeast Asia which is the uh, Philippines Indonesia also in Australia and basically it spread uh, worldwide <clears throat> but before this um, outbreak um, existed uh, it is um, shown that the status of these um, three countries or um, the region as a whole um, has kind of shown a 
slight decrease of its economic um, performance. Um, as we talk about the gross domestic product of these six countries, which is um, which which are rather located in East Asia, uh, there was a decrease again of the uh, GDP. So we will first tackle about the China, in which its gross domestic product from 2018, which is 7.9%, uh, um, decreased to 5.9 in 2019 and was um, and was also um, suspected to um, had a slower a, a slight but slower um, uh, development of its uh, economical activities um, due to the fact that um, this is this is the first country to have an outbreak of COVID-19 and <clears throat> also because of its other conflicts um, towards its um, uh, partnered countries such as USA. In Japan, uh, this is also a country which had a problem with the recent outbreak <clears throat> and just like China, um, Japan also had a slight decrease of uh, GDP performance from 2018 up until now. South Korea as well um, had a slight decrease, although kanang not that alarming. But um, it is expected that due to the current events, um, with with the occurrence of this disease called COVID-19. Um, it is expected that they will have a significantly lower, I mean slower, um, de uh, development of its economic status. And that would be all. Thank you. Okay, so this is, a, this is my comment for the facilitation or the de demo teaching of Grendel Bridge. So, Need to, um, Randall, you need to be more interactive to your students because you're, you're too straightforward and need to make things understandable because you're using some thing you're using some words that might be under ununderstandable to students and you can you can maybe you can just slow down your pacing because some students are just slow and cannot catch up. So, and that's it, so, okay, thank you. Uh, so, in Gandalf's report about the Asian, uh, East Asia economy, so the report was uh, really good, and also uh, the delivery was good, but there are some lacking uh, strategies that Gandalf must have. Uh, first is the teacher-to-student interaction, so that is very important for teachers nowadays, and also the art of questioning. The art of questioning is very important so that you will know that the students can catch up to your report. And also, uh, uh, students and teacher must have uh, interaction so, so that the students should be able to catch up with the topic discussed. That's all. And uh, by the redemo, uh, these suggestions will be applied. And thank you. Alright class, what have you observed from the graph? Why do you think uh, China had a slight decrease of its GDP um, growth? How about in the ASEAN communities? To the entirety of the world and also in the advanced economies. Alright, so before we um, proceed to the explanation of China's uh, decrease in its uh, GDP growth, um, we will first tackle about the entirety of um, the region in which uh, China is located and that is the economy of East Asia. But before we uh, proceed to the economy of East Asia, um, is anyone here, does anyone here um, know uh, what East Asia is and where is it located? 
Okay, um, how about the countries that are found in East Asia? Very good. Um, anyone here can explain why East Asia had has become a um, extremely uh, powerful region in Asia? Okay, very good. Um, basically, you seem to have a um, knowledge about the East Asia as well as its um, countries that are found in this region and also to the uh, economical status of uh, this region. So again, um, East Asia uh, has a population of 1.6 billion people um, with, the help, with the help of China um, harboring a huge population and this makes East Asia uh, one of the most populous region in the world. So again, um, there are six countries that are located in East Asia. Um, one of your classmates uh, already answered that. And that is the Japan, South Korea, uh, China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau. And let us, um, let us now proceed to the history of East Asia before we tackle about the current um, economical events uh, that are occurring in this region. So anyone here um, has a background of the history of um, East Asia? Very good. Uh, so it seems that um, most of you, I mean all of you, have um, understand or have already uh, learned the history of East Asia and that is good. So again, ancient East Asia was uh, economically dominated by China, Japan, and Korea. Uh, does anyone here know um, why these three countries are um, wealthy during uh, this ancient period? Because of Silk Road? What? Okay, what else? Okay, very good. Okay, very good. So, um, it seems that you have the idea of the history of East China. East China? The East Asia, rather. So, let us now proceed to uh, the economical um, status of uh, East Asia. So, we are all familiar with the current events of COVID-19, deba right? And which country it originated? Sige uh, Um what country does uh, COVID-19 first um, occurred? Very good, in China. <coughs> okay, so what do you think happened during that time since the outbreak of COVID-19? And also, um, for some reason, uh, China's neighboring countries also um, had have this uh, disease, even uh, South Korea and Japan. Okay, very good. So there was indeed a decrease of um, its economical activities. Let us uh, tackle then the big three of East Asia, which is the China, Japan, and South Korea. So then again, um, China um, being the uh, first country to have uh, this uh, COVID outbreak, um, suffered a, a slight decrease of um, its economical growth. Why slight? Um, that is because China is already a, a powerful country and um, it has strong connections between um, China and its um, trusted um, partners, partners um, one of which is the US, US and um the united uh united uh europe rather okay so um these three countries um even before the occurrence of covid-19 uh, suffered a uh, suffered a decrease in its economical um activities um china uh, from uh china from 7.1 i uh, 6.9% rather um, gdp growth in 2018 uh, in 2019 it 
was down to uh, 5.9 and also in the 2020 um, it is uh, suspected that it will have a lower uh, GDP growth uh, given the fact that it, it has already um, suffered from the recent uh, COVID-19 and also because um, it has a it has it has an, an, an undergoing um, conflict between its um, partners, uh, one of which is USA uh, between the trades. China and South Korea um, also suffered a decrease of um, GDP growth uh, even before the coronavirus outbreak.